I'm sure Borningkrantz are disappointed, but they're so capable of improving and maybe rethinking this program so that they can come on stronger at the Grand Prix Series Finals and at Worlds. On the ice now, the team from Poland, Sylvia Novak and Sebastian Koloszynski, in third place entering the free dance. Heading back to the locker room, Shaylin Bourne, <laughs> trying to keep a smile on her face. The music selections by Chopin. Their connective moves are quite nice. They work really well together, great partnering skills. Their highlights, however, are not as difficult as some of the other teams that we've seen. Maurizio Margaglio shaking the hand of Victor Kratz. This one of their more difficult lifts. He's in a spread eagle position, making it harder to control. about how height and hip differences can make a difference in ice dancers. Those proportions are important. This team is very close in height, and I think that restricts some of their lifting and some of their maneuvers. they felt about the rules. They were really the only team that said that they felt restricted by the rules. The rules sort of controlled the choreography too much. In your opinion though, Susie, do you think that with the new rules, dance has become less subjective, more of a sport? Well, I think it certainly is a step in the right direction. I think it's helpful to have these rules to make those comparisons but there'll always be an element in figure skating across the board. It's a performing art and a sport that's going to have that level of subjectiveness to it. I think there'll always be an argument about who will win the gold medal, Andrea. <laughs> very well and they're both very good skaters. I just feel a lot of their lifts and some of their moves are a little dated. Sylvia Novak and Sebastian Koloszynski, ninth in the world last year, hoping to medal here. We'll be back with their marks, reaction from the winners and losers, and a new young Russian couple on the ice when we return.